My dear friends, welcome to this episode, The Sacraments in Streams of Grace. And I am sure you are now practically understanding how we will celebrate the Eucharist. So, in the last session, we understood the words and action relating to the liturgy of the Word. And now, another aspect of the celebration is the songs and music, singing and music. It is paragraph 1156 says, the musical tradition of the universal church is a treasure of inestimable value, a treasure of inestimable value. Greater even than that of any other art. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The musical tradition of the universal church. I am so sorry that I cannot sing, but I admire the singing and admire the music and particularly the liturgical music. My goodness. We will be lifted up really into the heavenly, heavenly experience through the liturgical music. No doubt about it. And how can we express it? Only it is an experience when we celebrate, when we participate, even when we join in the singing, of the solemn liturgy, in the solemnity. So as we celebrate a Sunday Mass with all the choir singing the great mystical song of angels, that is the Gloria. This is my best experience in the liturgy, the Gloria. When we sing the Gloria, we are singing with angels and the choirs. Remember that in the liturgy, we are joining with the heavenly liturgy. Along with the angels and seraphims, we are singing. So we must catch up to that rhythm. The main reason of this preeminence is that as a combination of sacred music, sacred music, and words, it forms a necessary or integral part of solemn liturgy. That's what I said, solemn liturgy. It is from the Second Vatican Council teachings. The main reason for this preeminence is that as a combination of sacred music and words, it forms a necessary or integral part of solemn liturgy. The composition and singing of inspired psalms is another big area, psalms, I will lead on that, often accompanied by musical instruments were already closely linked to the liturgical celebration of the Old Covenant. In the Old Covenant, that is where David was singing psalms as a king. The church continues and develops this tradition. So, St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, chapter 5, 19, Address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart. And St. Augustine's famous saying, He who prays, he who sings praise twice. He who sings praise twice. <laughs> My experience is, and he who sings praise twice, and if we sing the word of God, if we sing the psalms, then we may be praying thrice or ten times. That is where 
<laughs> I am sorry to make a comment here. These days, all of us are musicians and writing many, many songs. They are also good, but I have also written many songs. <laughs> and then when I was about to write another set of songs, the Lord said, Stop. Don't write anymore. <laughs> it was a shock for me. But I know the Lord says something means it has a very good reason. I waited. Yes, Lord. I don't write any more songs. Speak to me. And the Lord said, I had already written 150 songs. Psalms. Why don't you use that? Why don't you sing that? Then I realized what an ignorance I was. I wanted to write my own songs. Of course, they are also inspirational. The Lord is very compassionate. <laughs> but the Lord shows a better way. So, thereafter, I began to... I directed my group, my team members to give melody to the Sams. And these days in our, particularly in our Malayalam retreat, we sing only psalms. We are building up in English retreats how to make it. So, in the liturgy, it is good to use the songs which are inspired psalms. That's why I written. The composition of singing must be of inspired psalms. Now, all the Psalms, 150 Psalms are inspired. How profound and how mysterious is those Psalms. I would like to say a few words about it. Pope John Paul II had given a series of teaching on Psalms. And in the church, Traditionally, there are lots of scholars who have done research and study and reflections on Psalms. One thing we can say, same Jesus Christ and his salvation plan and the fulfillment of salvation up to the new heaven and earth is the main subject of the Psalms. That is why we have Psalms in our daily Holy Mass selected according to season. We say according to seasons. That means we have Psalms for Lenten season. We have Psalms for Easter season. We have Psalms for Advent season. We have Psalms for various seasons. That means these seasons or these events of the Salvation history was preeminent, was presupposed, was planned more than thousand years before Christ. Very easy to remember Psalm 22. Take Psalm 22, wherein it is written, Psalms 22, wherein it is written, They have, they will pierce my legs and my hands. So what is about this? This is the crucifixion Jesus will be going through and Jesus' hands and legs will be pierced. That is foretold in the Psalms. Psalm 22. They will pierce my hands and my feet. 22.17 So that is why a very clear point about Inspirational. All what is the life of Christ, his passion, his death, his resurrection is written in the sand. Psalm 16 says, Psalm 16 says, I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart exhorts me. I keep the Lord always before me. With the Lord at my right I shall never be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, my soul rejoices, my body 
also dwell secure. For you will not abandon me to Sheol, nor let your faithful servant see the pit. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delight at your right hand forever. This is the psalm about the resurrection, that his body will never be decayed, that he will raise. So like that, every psalm speak about Christ. In Psalm 118 says, Psalm 118 says, the stone rejected became the cornerstone. That's about Jesus. So, inspired psalms, when we sing these psalms as a part of our celebration, then our liturgical solemnity become really great. In fact, all the there are there are congregations, there are monks and congregations, and also Gregorian chant, which is the official and richest music tradition, which lift up our soul to great experience. Therefore, I would recommend, it is good that you can also have a charism of writing, Okay, but at the same time, make use of the liturgy, make use of the inspired psalms and many canticles like Mother Mary C. in jubilation. That is the Magnificat. So when we sing Magnificat, we are singing with Mary, glorifying Jesus. And in the tradition of the Old Covenant, all the 150 Psalms, they used to sing daily. So it was the Jewish custom, so Mother Mary, Saint Joseph and Jesus himself used to sing these Psalms. So when we sing the Psalms, we are singing the same songs or hymns or inspired Psalms which was Sung by Jesus himself. So that is why in their custom, so it is written, he took the bread and gave thanks and praise. Thanks and praise means they sing a psalm of thanksgiving. Or one or two or three psalms of thanksgiving. Glorifying, thanking God for his might for his greatness, for his mighty deeds. So there are so many famous psalms like Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. And so, some of us has a fascination to particular psalms. It is very good. And there are people who sing those psalms it is like a rhythm of their life. So in the Israelites, in Jewish custom, even their daily life was, in their daily life, they were singing psalms. Not only in the liturgy, not only in the prayer. There are particular psalms they sing, which is harvest time. They are, while they are working in the, Working in the field, all the ladies one side, gents one side, but they were singing psalms and harvesting. They are planting seeds, singing psalms. And they are working at home, cutting vegetables, but they are singing psalms. So, when the liturgy of the music and singing that melody not only once you experience that melody in the liturgy, it will become a rhythm of our life. I have various 
particular psalms resounding in my heart. <laughs> Even I get up with such a voice singing in my heart. I don't know who is singing. But I know that is the Holy Spirit who is the author of these psalms. Who has given the melody for these psalms. Who related those psalms with the life of Christ. So that is why Christ, even on the cross, even on the nails, he was praying Psalms. Psalms. So my dear friends, in the liturgy, we must make more meaningful with the inspirational Psalms. Now in paragraph 1157, emphasizing song and music fulfill their function as signs. They are also signs in a manner all the more significant when they are more closely connected with the liturgical action. So liturgical action, according to the three principal criteria, Beauty expressive of prayer, the anonymous participation of the assembly at the designated moments, and the solemn character of the celebration. In this way, they participate in the purpose of the liturgical words and action. This music and song will become a participation of the words and action of the liturgy. The glory of God and the sanctification of the faithful. Now again, St. Augustine's expression from his book, My Confession, chapter 9. How I wept deeply moved by your hymns, songs, and the voices that echoed through your church. What emotions I experienced in them. Those sounds followed into my ears, distilling the truth in my heart. A feeling of devotion surged within me, and tears streamed down my face, tears that did me good. My dear friends, in this liturgical celebration, we must have a good relationship with the liturgical action and the songs. Of course, we do that like, like when before the consecration prayer begins, before the epiclesis begins, we sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. We sing only at that moment Hosanna. So also, we sing Gloria at the points where the Gloria must be sang. So, like that, we now know that what song where to sing. Therefore, <laughs> imagine if we sing Gloria in place of Hosanna or Hosanna in place of Gloria. It is, does not fit. Why it does not fit? Gloria is the, re, is the moment of the incarnation. That when Jesus, at the moment of incarnation, when Jesus was born, the whole angels were singing, Glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Peace to all in the earth. Today in the city of David, the Savior of the world is born. So that in the liturgy, in the solemn celebration, in the Holy Eucharist, at the beginning of the Eucharistic celebration is the birth of Jesus, reenactment of the incarnation of Jesus. So that is why at that moment we sing Gloria. And when we sing Gloria, it is not that we alone singing but the heaven and all the angels are singing. 
they are looking at this minister they are looking to this altar they are looking to this community who are celebrating the birth of jesus in the holy eucharist and then followed by other events in the liturgical form so every song should have a relationship with the liturgical action liturgical action and then it make our heart united with the liturgical action our heart is lifted up to the melody melody and melody has lot of pull the melody pull our heart and added to the particular music by the instruments you know different religion has got different melodies we have melodies often heard from the temple but we don't use that melody in the church the melody in a mosque we don't use that because each melody has its own meaning even the melody has a meaning so that is why in gregory a gregorian chant is never used in a temple or in a mosque it is the moment you hear that melody oh, oh this is from our church this is the liturgy solemn liturgy so the melody itself speak about the liturgy about the trinity about the event of the salvation mystery and that melody connect us with that liturgical action melody connect us now these days suppose even there are no words only that melody make us connected with that liturgical event only the melody so much importance is there for the music in the liturgy so continuing the harmony of signs song music words and actions is all the more expressive and fruitful when expressed in the cultural richness of the people of god who celebrate and religious singing by the faithful is to be intelligently fostered so that in devotions and sacred exercises as well as in the liturgical services in conformity with the norms of the church so we know in the liturgical seasons like carol singing christmas seasons so that melody and that songs make the culture of the people united with the culture we have a culture in south india another culture in north india <laughs> a different culture so the it may be same meaning but complete melody is different according to the culture so culture cultural aspect of each area to be integrated with the with the with the song and music there are certain place as soon as they sing they began to dance without the dance they cannot sing as they sing they began to dance particularly in africa or in north india they cannot sing without a movement that is their culture they cannot sing without clapping hands they cannot sing without ring. so there are different culture so let us thank god for this great great aspect of the liturgy the song and music oh lord help us to enjoy our liturgy and make our liturgy more solemn there are a lot of young people these days very much involved with the liturgical celebrations in the choir beautifully with the god given wonderful melody and the music and the talent of the instruments who oh, heavenly father we thank you right 
thousand years before Christ, you planned our liturgical forms in the Psalms, and you already outlined different Psalms to be, which can be used for different liturgical seasons and liturgical actions. Thank you, Father. Help us, each one of us, to integrate with the melody, to integrate with the liturgical music, to integrate with the liturgical actions. Spirit of God, I worship you. Spirit of God, I worship you, I worship you, 